Hello, Jessica. Hi. Thank you for accepting our invitation today to speak with us. You are an incredible lady, and it's my privilege today to speak to you how we can break the bias as women in leadership roles and making an impact while staying true to our true femininity. Many young women today aspire to be a C-level executive one day. So for someone who is starting out early in their career, what would you be the three tips and all advice that you would give them? Be not afraid to speak up and ask for how you would like to learn. Uh, I think two is that you know being transparent and open about where you draw your personal boundaries and be transparent to your colleagues, uh, to your clients, uh, to your boss about it. Uh, and I think thirdly, um, you know, care more, much more about what and who you learn with, and not just you know titles and promotions and stuff. And I think that will go a very very long way. For, for you, for example, you know, you're, you and your uh, kind of um, classmates are at Imperia. I'm sure that, you know, for you guys to get there, you have a certain caliber of education capability uh, and, you know, and, and, um, and work track racket to get there. You should have the confidence that, look, I will do well. I never worry about that. I don't, you know, I will not do well. Uh, and, you know, I think if you take that attitude, you will tend to learn more. You optimize more for what you learn and who you learn from, as opposed to promotion titles and roles. So I personally read a lot of books about uh, women leadership. And one topic that keeps reoccurring um, is that women should lead with their femininity. So I wondered, what would, what would you say about the top three challenges that you have faced so far as a woman in, uh, in your career? You should feel comfortable. Uh, I think, uh, you know, defining your own style of leadership, as long as it's with connecting with people, right? And and, and doesn't matter whether it's just one-on-one -on -one lunches or tea or whatever. Uh, so I think uh, that's kind of how I define, kind of be comfortable enough to define your own brand of leadership. Uh, in terms of three challenges, um, uh, I think the first one uh, is really, you know, what are some of the perceived norms or glass ceiling you know, that sometimes inadvertently that we have to kind of break, right? The second is much more on our self-imposed, uh, a lot as I, as I will, you know, see through my career, be it myself or other colleagues, sometimes we self-impose a lot of uh, restrictions and guilt, particularly with um, family, uh, and how do you overcome that? And then I think thirdly, uh, making it more about, um, you know, your own kind of needs versus and, and as opposed to us versus them this is not a it's not a gender issue a lot of things that i mentioned i think it's much more about respecting individuals different preferences uh and how we accommodate to a diversity of styles and personal uh, lifestyle needs and less about it is a women versus man uh, kind of issues right um so i think these are the three challenges i would frame as uh, you know, as I look back, some of the most common obstacles that people face. Yeah, it takes a lot of self awareness. I think also that you know to know that what your needs are and be able to communicate that effectively to your uh, to your colleagues, to yourself, and to the people around you as well. And uh, that's that's great that you know for that from your example that, you know, a senior leader can. You know, and also have a great personal life as well. It doesn't have to be, you know, just all about work. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, of course, uh, now that I uh, know we're as, as senior leaders, uh, we should role model ourselves and make it open. Um, you know, and then uh, when when you're younger, etc. I think, um, you know, more people doing it. It's good because it makes it less, you know, harder for you to kind of break the mold as kind of single cell, right? Uh, and they're encouraging not just. I think women and men alike uh, to kind of have their own um, kind of style and standards and encouraging that I think would also, um, you know, foster this type of, uh, make it much easier. When I first uh, started actually uh, in China, as I said, um, I also have to break molds. Right? Like I said, I know uh, there, I'm still the only one who dyes my hair and who dress as I like, you know, that you break, uh, you break certain molds. You know, and then, the, you know, at the beginning, people do look at you and frown a little bit, uh, as with all almost, um, you know, but um, but I think, you know, more and more, actually, people look at their people who, you know, you can see they start to, you know, they, they feel that, oh, it's actually okay. People ask me where I, you know, where I 
buy my clothes, etc. You know, I think it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I think um, you know, uh, the the person who starts doing it first uh, will take a little bit hard, but more and more, actually, you encourage people um, to do it, and, it, and so it actually makes it much more relaxing environment and a more fun environment to want to work there. Thank you, Jessica. That was really inspiring. Thank you for your time today. My pleasure. I wish you all the very best. Thank you.